Does Resizable Bar actually boost FPS and if so, which games benefit most from enabling Resizable Bar? Now in today's video I'd like to take a deep dive into Rebar or Smart Access Memory as the feature is called on AMD GPUs and also clean up with a few common misconceptions when it comes to this feature. Now even I had misconceptions. Before I went into this video I thought I would just benchmark a couple of games with Rebar enabled and Rebar disabled and show you the results and that is it. However, the reality of things is a little bit more complicated. So to understand why, we should probably first explain what Resizable Base Address Register, or Rebar for short, actually is. Well, it is a PCI Express feature, so not so much an NVIDIA or AMD feature, that actually has been implemented already since PCI 3, so that's 2010 when that came out. And it has been implemented in order to improve the communication between your processor and your graphics card. Now to get a very top-down view of what Rebar is, let me paraphrase from this article from PC World. So when you play a game, your TPU requests textures, shaders and some other assets from your CPU. Now these obviously get stored in your graphics card video RAM or VRAM before getting drawn into an image. However, historically, the CPU was limited to accessing only chunks of 256 megabytes of your graphics frame buffer at every time. So instead of actually putting all the textures and all the assets into the GPU, it actually had to kind of um, put them into a queue and junk them in 256 megabyte pieces. On the other hand, with Rebar enabled, your CPU can now access your entire GPU's frame buffer, which greatly reduces the number of transfer needed and thus potentially boosts FPS. However, as Nvidia actually themselves claimed, Rebar does not improve performance in all games and instead can even decrease your performance. Because of this, the Nvidia driver also specifically has to support Rebar for the games that you'd like to play. And because that list is actually really short, most of the games that you're likely playing do not support Rebar on Nvidia-based GPUs. Now, the problem here is that I really couldn't find a updated list with current games where Rebar is enabled by NVIDIA. Um, all that I found was this Reddit post here that I'm linking in the description below where a year ago somebody has actually gone through the driver and tried to figure out which games are natively supported on NVIDIA. However, this list is obviously not up to date with current games. On the other hand, if you have an AMD GPU and you enable Rebar, then there is no distinction between games that increase or decrease performance and you will just get what you get. So you have to perform your own testing, which in my opinion is a bit the worst approach to this entire situation. But coming back to these games that according to Nvidia should see an increase in performance with Rebar enabled, we find that two of the games that are most prominently featured on this channel, Modern Warfare 3 and Battlefield 2042, are both games that actually do have official support for Rebar by Nvidia. Therefore, for today's video, I performed performance benchmark for Modern Warfare 3, Battlefield 2042, Cyberpunk 2077, and then I'm also going to look at two games that don't have official support for Rebar by Nvidia in Rainbow Six Siege and Counter-Strike 2. Quick note before we dive into the results, you should note that I performed all of these tests at 1440p. Now, the outcome of these tests are going to be likely very different at 1080p or 4K because quite different amounts of data has to be transferred between the CPU and the GPU and therefore please um, extrapolate these results with a grain of salt if you do not have a 1440p monitor. Starting off with Modern Warfare 3 that I played at the balanced quality preset. So this is basically what I suggest everybody to run with in my FPS guides, which if you haven't seen it, you can check out linked in a card right now. The green bars on this plot are for my Intel and Nvidia system. So it has an i9 3900K and an RTX 4080. The red bars are for my AMD based system. So this system has an R7 7800 X3D CPU, as well as an RX 7900 XTX GPU. And finally, the blue bars are for a mix of the two. So this is the Intel CPU with the AMD GPU. Finally, the dark bars are for the average FPS and the light bars for the 1% lows. As you can see on the Nvidia based system, we don't really see any improvement when enabling resizable bar. Note, of course, I enabled rebar in the config of MW3, but still I didn't see any improvements. If anything, I saw a slight reduction in the 1% lows. However, this could also be due to sampling uncertainty. 
On the other hand, on my all AMD based system, you can see a nice 12% boost in the average FPS and a 4% boost in the 1% lows when enabling resizable bar. And finally, for my mixture based system with the AMD GPU and Intel CPU, we can actually see quite a drastic reduction in the 1% lows with rebar enabled. Now, I should mention at this point that the resizable bar feature on AMD systems is called Smart Access Memory or SAM in short, and this is not really supported if you have an Intel based CPU. There is still support for rebar from a technical perspective, so from the PCIe um, standard, you can enable rebar on an uh, Intel based CPU with an AMD based GPU. However, all of the performance tweaks and improvement that AMD delivers at a driver level are apparently not available. So if you also have this kind of mixture type of system, be very careful when enabling resizable bar. Now, before we continue, I'd like to mention that producing these types of video actually takes a lot of time. I do work full time and YouTube really is just a side project for me. So pretty much most of my free time I dedicate to researching, testing and producing these types of videos that you're watching right now. So if you do enjoy this very data driven approach of me actually doing these benchmarks and discussing the results and trying to research why certain things are the way they are, then please hit that like button and add a comment down below. It really can just be a smiley or a thumbs up, whatever. It really just helps out the video and the channel as a whole tremendously if you guys interact with my content. And because I pour so much time and effort into this video, it really would put a smile on my face if I saw you guys appreciating the work that I put into these videos. Next, let's have a look at Battlefield 2042, which should also officially be supported by Nvidia. Well, at least Battlefield V was, so you can infer that Battlefield 2042 is also. And we can see that on the Nvidia based system, we have a drastic reduction in performance when enabling resizable bar. Again, the polar opposite is the case for my all AMD based system, where I'm seeing a roughly 25% improvement in my average FPS, as well as the 1% lows. Now, when moving to the mixed system, we can again see a nice boost in performance, which is in stark contrast to the results that we saw for Modern Warfare 3. Moving on to Cyberpunk, which I benchmarked at the medium quality preset, and both my NVIDIA and AMD based system see a slight boost in performance when enabling resizable bar. Quite interestingly, we can see massively higher performance overall on my all AMD based system when it comes to Cyberpunk 2077. So I might argue that this game is likely much better optimized for AMD based systems compared to Intel and Nvidia based systems from my testing. On the other hand, what surprised me most was that on my mixed based system, we actually see a slight reduction in performance, very small, but still potentially measurable. Um, and that might maybe be because the resizable bar feature is not really used in the way that AMD is actually envisioning it here. So here again, we have to be cautious. If we have such a mixed based system, we probably don't want to be running resizable bar on Cyberpunk 2077. Finally, let's also have a look at a couple of games that don't natively support resizable bar by Nvidia. So the Nvidia results here are pretty much useless because the Nvidia drivers, as I mentioned before, actually block rebar for these games that Nvidia actually hasn't envisioned rebar to be used. Um, so we can see the AMD based system has potentially an improvement of the 1% lows, not so much of the averages. And finally, the mixed system sees also a ever so slight increase in performance with resizable bar enabled. So it looks like even on these games that are not natively supported by Nvidia, we could see an improvement in performance on the other system, even if it might not be very significant. And finally, just for fun, we have the results for Counter Strike 2 at the high quality preset. And from the results, you can see that there is basically no difference of enabling or disabling resizable bar. Once again, this game is not natively supported by Nvidia. So the topmost result you can basically ignore. It's basically the same with both tests. Uh, I know there is a way to force rebar on the Nvidia based systems where it's not natively supported. However, from the AMD results, you can see that there are no improvements to be gained on Counter Strike 2 with rebar. And from my observation on my systems, there is actually no measurable impact on performance in Counter Strike 2 when enabling resizable bar at least at 1440p. 
Finally, for those who'd like to try, here's how to enable rebar on two motherboards. So first we're looking at an ASUS type motherboard with an AMD GPU and AMD CPU. And as you can see, all you have to do is to boot into the BIOS, go into the easy mode. So don't be in the advanced mode. And then at the very top, simply click on resize bar and enable the feature. Of course, make sure that you save and access the BIOS. And after you've done this, you should actually now see that resizable bar is enabled. The easiest way to check whether this has worked on AMD based system is by simply opening up the adrenal software, then going to the performance tab and under tuning, you should see that the smart access memory feature is enabled. On the other hand, here's an example for an Intel based system where enabling resizable bar is a little bit more involved, especially for gigabyte motherboards as I'm using here. You want to go to the settings tab, then click on IO ports. Next, you'll first have to enable above 4G encoding and then only the option to enable resizable bar will be presented to you in the BIOS. Finally, to test whether the feature is actually enabled, simply right click on your desktop, open the Nvidia control panel, click on help, then system information. And now you should be able to see whether or not resize bar is enabled. So in conclusion, would I recommend you to enable resizable bar? Yes or no. Now the answer again comes down to so many factors that it's really hard to just give a blanket recommendation as many other content creators, frankly, give. They claim that enable this feature to gain 10% FPS in any game. And that's just not true. The honest answer is just that it is complicated. If you have an all AMD based system, you likely want to enable resizable bar because in all the tests that I did, I only saw slight or significant boosts in performance. However, I never saw a decrease in performance. On the other hand, if you have an Intel based CPU and an Nvidia GPU, then frankly, I wouldn't even bother with enabling resizable bar because you would first of all have to test whether this game actually supports rebar by Nvidia. And second of all, you have to test if you see any improvements. For my testing, I only saw improvements in Cyberpunk 2077 and that only by a marginal amount. So realistically, on these types of systems, my recommendation would be to just disable a resizable bar and not think about it anymore. And finally, if you have an Intel based CPU and an Nvidia GPU in your system, then honestly, enabling rebar is not generally recommended because it's not using the proper SAM um, feature that AMD has implemented. So frankly, for people running this type of mixed system, you'll have to do your own research and figuring out whether the games that you play benefit from enabling resizable bar. Now, since you're watching this video, you're probably also interested in gaming performance as a whole. And therefore, you're probably also wondering whether or not you're getting higher or lower performance when you're going to have to move to Windows 11 at the end of next year. So if this is you, then check out this video where I'm discussing exactly that topic and trying to figure out whether we're going to gain or lose performance when we upgrade to the new operating system. But with that, I'd like to thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you guys in the next video.